Somebody suggested that I make a beaded fairy. Hi, this is Tweek. Today I'm going to make a beaded fairy. Join us. Supplies you'll need for this project are you will need beads. Gather up your findings, your bead caps, all different sizes and shapes because you're going to need them to decide how your fairy is going to turn out. You will need some beading wire, some tools to put it all together, and pieces of brass that you can cut to make the wings. So let's get started. When I got the suggestion, would I try to make a beaded fairy? I said okay. A few little challenges came with it. Wings and the size. As you can see here, I've got a couple prototypes. I took a butterfly piece of brass and fashioned that into wings for this one here. And this one here, I took a flower, a brass flower, and cut it to suit to make the wings. And these are lovely. I like them a lot, but to me, they're too big. So I wanted to go smaller. So this will be probably one of the tiniest little creatures I've made. And let me show you how I could do this. The best way for me to show you how I made her is I'm going to deconstruct her. So pieces of her are lying here. You'll need these four inch pins. These are flathead pins. And I'm going to use three of these. One will be for her arms and one each for her legs. You need three of those pins. Then you'll need the wire. I'm using beetle-on wire. And then the assortment of beads, that's up to you. I went with little, the tiniest beads I could find. So I've got two, four, and six millimeter beads going here. So as I deconstruct her, you'll see that I've got a gold round bead. I've got one of these, I call them crown beads, but it's just a, it looks like a little crown. I've got cap beads of different sorts, and it's all my attempt to try to make my little dancer look like a fairy. I've got a bead here, it's a teardrop bead I'm using for her head. For her neck I'm using different cap beads. As you can see as I go along, this is a piece that fits inside the first. This was this is a half cluster that I made. See how tiny the beads are? These are two millimeter beads. Unlike others that I've made, this one I haven't tied off yet. So if you ever watch me make a half cluster, at the very end when you get it the half done, you go around with the wire so that they meet up and then you put a knot. Now I'm not going to knot that just yet because that's where I'm going to attach her wings. And I could do that right now. I'm going to show you the rest first. These pieces I'm trying to keep in order so I get them back the way I found them. This, these two pieces here represent, it's another bead cap, another, I call those crown beads. Those represent her waistline. This piece is a cap bead. I only had one of them, I wish I had more. So you're gonna have to get creative with what you've got on hand. And this is another half cluster. And this one is six millimeter beads. But the relationship of the Half clusters is what made the size of the dancer. So you can see. So if you go bigger, I've got some over here. If you have a bigger size bead, a bigger bodice type, see how the dancer or the fairy will get taller. I want it tiny and you could even go bigger. It's up to you how big. Oh, that's a full cluster, but it's up to you how big you go with these, with these fairies. Um, the legs. And here's where we have the wire that holds it all together. One piece of wire. The legs are these four inch long head pins that I strung little teeny beads on. I put a teardrop bead at the foot. Well, let me construct that for you right now. We take our head pin and we're gonna put a teardrop bead on it. Now I looked for the smallest ones I could find because I'm doing a tiny little fairy. That represents a foot. Then I put a little teeny tiny, this is a bead cap, and it reminds me of a stocking somehow, almost like an anklet. So I put that down. And then I had nine of these little teeny tiny two millimeter beads. Let's see if I can get them strung on here. 
If you've got a really long-legged fairy, that's up to you. <laughs> but I wanted one that matched the size of her body. So once I decided what size skirt or half cluster I'm using for her skirt, I would measure up with the legs to get the measurement I wanted. And that happened to be nine of these little two millimeter beads. The challenge here is gathering up all the little findings in the beads to make what it is I'm trying to make here. Okay, nine beads. I would make two of those. And then what I'm gonna do is, I kinda use my finger as a measure, maybe half inch or so, I'm gonna cut the wire because it's too long. And then I'm gonna take my curling tool and I'm just going to curl down. Just make several loops at the top of this leg. Not really good at doing this, but I, I do it well enough that it suffices. There we go. So here's what you have. You have a little foot with a little anklet and you have the leg and you have a curl there. So when you get two of these done, you take your wire. This is, gosh, I didn't use very much. There's, oh boy, about 16, 17 inches of wire and you fold that in half and you're gonna place a bead, uh, more of a tiny bead. This bead here, I want it to fit into the cluster. So whatever size cluster you're using on the bottom for her skirt, you want the bead to not go through. It doesn't have to be a big bead, but just so that it doesn't go through. Okay, now on either side of that bead, I'm going to put one of her legs. String this one on. <laughs> she might seem a little bow-legged, but it does work. <laughs> so now you've got, hanging on this wire, two little legs and a bead in the center. She's ready to dance. Now we're going to take this. Whoops, get halfway through. Make sure it's all even up here. Okay, and we're going to push this through the half cluster. And you'll see right away that that bead stops it from pulling through. And you've got her legs. And you actually, since this is wire, you can manipulate the legs so that they look like she's jumping, she's leaping, she's crossing them, whatever she's doing. Whatever she's doing. Okay, so here we go. Next going to follow my pattern. I'm using this bead cap and this is going to not only help hold those wires in place, but it's going to add a little bit of decor to her skirt and it's going to hide the top of that skirt. It looks like it's meant to be there. Now I'm going to add, and let me look at my pattern here. I'm going to add a bead here that I, I think of it as a belt. And you'll see when I add it down, See, it's almost like her waist. See how tiny she is? I love the tininess. And now I'm gonna add a couple of beads. Um, these are for decoration. And instead of placing them going down, I'm gonna place them going up because I want them to cradle the next piece. Fits down and just nestles there. Think of it as a belt and waist. So the next piece will nestle into that, and that's where we come with the tinier half cluster that I haven't yet put the knot in to keep it together. And that's because I'm. this is where I'm gonna add her wings, the wings. Okay, I tried many. I thought butterflies are pretty. You have to alter it a little bit, but this is the one I liked. It's a brass flower, and we'll leave the description below if you'd like to order them. Uh, different brass pieces, and I've had lots of them to choose from. And this is the one I liked. So I took a pair of strong scissors, and I'm just gonna cut out two of these five. Wait, three, six, I'm gonna cut out two. Because I want wings. This brass piece has a hole in the center, and that's really, really helpful. So what I'm gonna do now is bend that down a little bit, and I'm gonna come up here and just come next to the bottom there and just, just brass very easily. Now I've got a pair of wings. So what I'm gonna do is take these two wires, still not gonna put the knot in like I would, and I'm gonna add the wings just by pushing the wire through. 
It seems so simple, but a lot of trial and error to try to find this combo that I liked. And as you can see, that's gonna be where her wings are. Make sure I did it that same way. Yep, I did. And now I'm gonna put the knots that I would usually put in with my cluster. I might have to bring in some tool help here. Make sure that's, I want it to be small. I don't want it to have a big old knot on her back. See, that's gonna be good. And then I'm gonna snip off the excess as close as I can get it to the knot. Looks like it's upside down, right? Now we're gonna add this, string this onto her body. Her body's sitting there waiting for a torso. Here it comes. Come through the cluster, make sure both wires are through that center piece. Sometimes they go astray. And let that fall down. And you can see how she's coming together. I just feel good at this part because I think, okay, at least now I have mostly all of my fairy done. Isn't she cute? Oh my goodness, the problems you've given me, little fairy, for being so little. A neck. I want a piece of bead in there that's not only going to hold up her head in the findings I used to make her neck piece, but that will leave enough room so that I can push her arms through that space. So I've got a bead here, a bicone bead. Here again, depending on the size you make, is the size you're going to use. And see how that just nestles in there, it just sits snug, and it holds the wires in place. So now she's she's not going anywhere. She's being held together, and that was that was the goal. Make sure I got things straightened up here. Okay, now we're going to add a couple of pieces, and I call these think of it as a collar. These are just again cap beads. This one's going down. I'm sticking with kind of brass, but some silver's creeping in here, so that's okay. You could use different colors, you know, just go wild with however you think you want to do this. And then this, this is another cat bead. Again, I'm flipping it up, side down. Oh, if I could get my little hands on this tiny little thing. I want it to help cup her neck, her head. You can see where this is going. One helps to cover what's there and lifts her head a little bit. And then her head, I was trying round beads, didn't work, so I tried a teardrop bead. And see, that's what we have so far. I think that's a good size. That's where a lot of trial and error to find out what bead looks right with this little body. And that, well, you can see the mess in front of me. All my beads just got dumped out as I went through. Now I want to add a little bit. I don't want to add hair. I would love to add hair, but I wouldn't know how to do that. So here's another little bead cap. This one happens to match the one that's on her feet. So I kind of liked that. And now another little crown bead. I know there's a real name for these, but I call them crown beads because they remind me of crowns. Okay. And another bead that's going to cap it off and give us a place to crimp. Now, if you're thinking I'm forgetting something, I'm not. This is what we have so far. Let's see, do I like you? Your wings are a little bit off, but the arms will help with that. Her wings are fine, they, they move, see? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the crimp bead in there and then we'll add her arms. So, let's see, I've got crimp beads here. You could use silver, you could use gold. I happen to have gold here. I think there's both there. I've got little round crimp beads. Everything on this project was tiny and I have big old fingers. So just be patient with yourself. Ooh, I got it on there. Okay, there's the crimp bead. I would like to bring this around and give her a little bit of a hanger so I can hang her up. See what we did here? Look at the size difference. Look at that, wow. Okay, so yes, we're going way, way tinier on this little guy, this little one. So let me, there's too much here. Let me cut some of that off. And push the ends back into that crimp bead. And if I'm lucky, I can push into the gold bead as well. Tiny beads and big fingers, sometimes that doesn't work out too well. 
But today, I'm going to run with it. Now I'm going to make sure that this is snug. So I'm pulling up on the side that's holding her all together. Okay, and then I'm pushing the wire in. Okay. And now I'm going to crimp that. I think that's as good as you're going to get there, girl. And crimp. Always get relieved when the crimping has happened because now we've got our little fairy except she needs arms. You're turning out good girl. Yes, very very cute. The arms. The arms are a singular pin. One of those four inch pins. You really do want to try to get four inch just because you can you have more wiggle room to play with. So on this one I have tiny little teardrop beads which represent her hands. And then I have tiny little, these little crown beads. And then I had five two millimeter beads on each side of her arms. So it goes the little bead representing the hand that represents her cuff. And then I had five beads. Now I'm going to push this through her bodice. We'll go this way. Go in one side of the cluster and come out the other. And there's room in there. Just wiggle around and find it. Got it? I'm wiggling past the bead that's in. That's why you don't want a bead that's too big. See how it came out? And already it's going to hold. But I want a little more insurance on that. So I'm pushing this wire all the way through. And you have one of her arms. This is good. Now, try to straighten that out just a little bit. The arms and legs are nice because you can pose them. And she's, she's getting a pose already like she's flying. <laughs> okay, so now you want to mimic what you did on that side. And you're going to go backwards. So you've got five beads. And now we have her little cuff. And then we have her little teeny hand. There she is. Now how am I going to end that? Well. I'm going to put another gold crimp bead on there to help hold that in place. And then I have to decide. These, I did not put a wand, but I thought, wouldn't it be cute? Most of the fairies I knew in the stories I knew had wands. So let's put the tiny little crimp bead on there. Oh, why is everything so tiny today? Because I'm making a tiny fairy. So I'm just going to pull that tight, make sure everything's tight on that wire, and give it a crimp. Wow, that's really big. <laughs> Are you flying? And now I've got to decide. What I want to do is just bend the wire up like it would be a wand. But how big would that wand be? And is that the look I want? That looks more like a sword than a wand. <laughs> So I'm thinking, because if you don't like this, you just snap it off right there and you're done. But I have these little teeny beads that look like stars. And I thought, wouldn't that be cute to put a star upon theirs, a little star. So here we go, another crimp bead. I'm going to decide where that star goes. So I'm going to go maybe half inch up and I'm going to crimp that right on the wire. Now let's put our star on there. And then I'm going to add another crimp bead to hold it in place and give it a crimp. And now, nicely crimped. See that? Will it stay in one place? I hope. If it doesn't, I will call an experiment and I will snip it off. Here we go. I'm going to get close as I can to that crimp bead. Looks like it's going to stay. What do we have here? <laughs> Are you going to bestow a wish upon somebody? Little teeny tiny fairy. Let me see what you look like. Okay, I'm laughing again at something I made. Fix your legs and we have our fairy. She's coming your way to bestow your wish. 
So if you like what you've seen here today, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and remember to ring the bell so you know when another episode of Tweaks with Tweak will be coming along. Until then, look at I made the fairy. She's tiny. She's sweet. She's got some really big friends. And that's okay. <laughs> See you again.